Nation. Next, we have with us the Hof University of Applied Sciences. From the Hof University, we have with us today Ms. Narisa Schwartz, and she will guide us through various pieces of information about the university. The Hof University of Applied Sciences, as I had explained right at the beginning, Applied Science University, so it's basically bachelor's and master's, and practical approach is the focus or the highlights of these. And Hof, uh, you can study various uh, programs. There are MBAs, there are yes, M engineering's, German Indian management studies, and a plethora of very That's interesting true. programs. Can you see my presentation as well? So, Ms. Uh, Schwarz, are you okay, good to go? Maybe you start? Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Melissa Schwarz. I work for the We can hear you. We can see you also. Hello. Hope University. And, um, I'm going to tell you a few things about our university in general before um, my colleague, Professor Daniel Werner, will um, talk about two of our international master's programs. So, um, Hof University is located in the state of Bavaria, um, which is in southern Germany, and um, it's a state-funded university, which um, also means that many of our bachelor's programs and some of our master's programs don't have tuition fees. Um, there are some exceptions, though, especially with our international master's programs, but um, my colleague will tell you more about that later. Um, Hof University is a fairly new university. It was founded in 1994, and we are a fairly small university, too. We currently have about 3,500 students on our two campuses in Hof and Münchberg, which are about 20 kilometers apart and 10% um, um, international students. Um, we have three departments here at Hof University, the business department, the department of computer science, and the engineering department. And um, we also have an institute for continuing education for um, students with a minimum of professional experience, um, which also offers some of our international master's programs. Um, in total, we have uh, 29 bachelor's and master's programs um, here at Hof University, and several of them are completely taught in English, especially some of our master's programs. Um, we also do some research here at Hof University, um, though being a university of applied science, it's more like applicable research, um, and we have three research institutes for information systems, material science, and water and energy management. And um, we are also a very international university, and from the very start, um, we've had a focus on India, actually, which is also why the Bavarian Indian Center for Business and University Cooperation is located right here on our campus. And I should also mention that we have a really strong Indian community here. Actually, at the moment, 150 students from India are enrolled in one of our full-time or exchange programs. Okay, um, about the city of Hof, um, as you can see in the map, we are located right in the heart of Europe. And um, actually, some of the bigger cities like Berlin, Munich, or Prague are also within easy reach from Hof by train or bus. And um, Hof is a fairly small city. It only has about 45,000 inhabitants. <coughs> Um, but um, it has some really outstanding cultural offers for such a small place. Um, for example, it has a symphonic orchestra of its own. It's got a theater. Um, it's the home of an international movie festival, which takes place each year in October, and is quite renowned, actually. And, of course, there are all sorts of um, pubs and clubs and so on, cafes. Um, we um, have a very green campus, actually, and um, in Germany, there is a student magazine called Unicum, and it has 
an annual competition called Germany's Most Beautiful Campus. And we actually got this award in um, a couple of years back. And um, as some of you may know, uh, Germany has a more moderate kind of climate. And actually, the city of Hof is a bit colder on the average than, than many other German cities. So um, in the winter, we are a bit more likely to have snow, which can be quite lovely, by the way. Um, but as you can see in the picture, we also have some really nice summer days, which you can enjoy on our campus. And um, I should also mention that um, with Hof being such a small city and um, Hof University being a rather small and cozy university, um, we are, um, it's also quite safe to, to live and walk around here. And um, we also offer 24 hours access um, to some of our facilities for all our students. Um, you, um, when you get enrolled here, you get a student card and you get 24-hour access to, um, for example, our computer labs and library and the cafeteria. And with the student card, you are also allowed to use um, buses within the city of Hof and some trains in the region for free. Um, okay, about our education. Um, we actually have very small student groups here. Um, so um, that means you get intensive personal and academic support during your studies. And all our professors are also really approachable. Um, you don't have to wait for several weeks to, to get an appointment with your professor, um, which may happen at a very large university, for example. And um, Hof University was also the first Bavarian state university to achieve the highest level of, ac of accreditation there is in Germany, which is called system accreditation. And um, yeah, as, as has already been mentioned, um, we are a University of Applied Sciences, which means um, we, put a, we put our focus on practice orientation. So um, all our professors um, do not only have PhDs, but they also have long-standing experience in industry. Actually, in order to, to work as a professor at Hof University, you must prove um, a minimum of five years of experience in industry. And um, yeah, we also offer a lot of career promoting activities for our students. We've got a career service here on campus, um, which also offers some special activities for our international students, um, like English language um, training on how to apply for a job in Germany or intercultural training. Um, but it's not all work and no play here, of course. And we also have very active student life on campus. Um, for example, we've got an international team, which is made up of student volunteers who organize things like um, excursions or pub evenings or um, dinners, international dinners and cooking competitions and stuff like that. And um, we've also got free sports facilities and um, we, we also have a welcome center for all our international students. Um, which helps you prepare for your stay here and um, also helps you in the first few weeks weeks here um, with things like visa application, travel arrangement, and so on. Um, we also offer a pickup service from train stations when you arrive here. Uh, we've got a housing service here on campus um, which helps you find accommodation and we've, we offer orientation weeks um, at the beginning of each semester to, to help you um, do all the administrative stuff like enrollment, getting a residence permit, taking out a health insurance, and so on. And we also have um, free German language courses free for everyone. Um, just a, just a, a few things about cost of living. Um, they are actually quite moderate here in Hof compared to, to other European or other German cities. Um, you, you need to calculate about um, 250 to 450 euros for um, rent, depending on whether you stay in a student residence or in a privately rented flat. Um, you need to take out a health insurance. It's compulsory for all our students. But um, in Germany, this is heavily subsidized for students. So it means it costs only um, about 90 euros per month. Um, yeah, then you need to calculate um, for food and personal expenditure, depending on your personal needs. So that's a total of about um, 550 to 800 euros per month. 
Okay, um, that's it from my side, actually. Um, I'd like to leave some time for my colleague as well. We'll talk about the master's program. So, okay. Yeah, mm. good evening and a warm welcome also from my side. My name is Daniel Werner. I'm professor at Hof University and I'm attached to our Institute for Continuing Education via which we handle the programs which we want to introduce to you today. So two uh, of these programs, uh, Operational Excellence and General Management, are the programs about we want to talk with you today. Why do we offer especially these courses? It has quite a long history. We have quite a long history traveling to India and we always visited German companies and talked with them about their need, needs and yeah, how to bridge the gaps between Germany and India and how to guarantee like also a quality manufacturing in India. And these two courses, I would say, were the outcomes of our discussion with industry. So one of the drivers and motivation of our companies certainly is they intend to reduce the number of expatriates which are sent from Germany like to India and they want to replace them via local management people and therefore they told us such courses would be very much required to prepare young students, young professionals for such uh, management tasks in the future. And it is, of course, also about getting to know about corporate culture, the way the German philosophy of management, and therefore they always requested us to conduct such courses in Germany in an Indo-German context. And as I said, general management and operational excellence are two new programs which meet the requirements of the companies. Somehow it's about transferring the made in Germany philosophy to other countries. Yeah. One second. The benefits of our master's programs, they, they are designed in an international context. You will work in international teams. The students have various cultural backgrounds. It's about interdisciplinary learning. So an electrical engineer might discuss with a business administrator and a chemical engineer and all are supposed to have work experience. So we really appreciate very much these discussions in classroom and exchange of ideas, views and also the exchange in how to solve problems in different ways. It is always about practice orientation and employability. This is our focus. We are a university of applied science. And as my colleague already pointed out, all the professors have practical work experience with industry. So we really, really stress and focus employability and therefore we always try to get a connect with the local uh, enterprises and our partner companies and uh, at the end of the day all of the students will need to conduct internship semesters, two internship semesters, so we have uh, embedded in our curriculum a transfer from practice uh, to theory and theory to practice. Common features of the two programs, medium of instruction is English language, so you shouldn't, you don't need to worry, you can come to Germany, it might be or will be a smooth transition. Uh, the courses are offered in English, but we provide you with sufficient and quite a huge uh, workload of German language training to be able to successfully later on survive and to make a good career in the professional context. We talk about programs with a duration of two years, one theoretical year with us uh, on the campus of Hof University and one year of internships, meaning two semesters of internships. 
The fees for both of the programs are 2,950 euros of tuition per semester plus some 100 euros uh, which the students' union charges. One relief from the tuition fee will be the internship period. We talk about paid internships and so yeah, you might earn what you need and what you need to cover for the tuition fee for the last two semesters while you do your internships. Admission criteria, you should have a bachelor's degree. Uh, we request you uh, for 180 European uh, credit transfer system points or equivalent. We ask you for a MAT or GMAT score of a minimum of 600. You should prove uh, proficiency in English language via ILTS or if you have done your bachelor studies in English language, and I suppose today we talk about India, this will be the case, uh, you won't need to prove your English skills again. We request you uh, by arrival in Germany to show up with an A1 level in German language. And as I said, we emphasize quite a lot on your German language skills. We want you to reach a B1 level before you enter your internships. It will extremely help you to get good internships. And if you wish so, also to have a future career in Germany or simply to be successful in an Indo-German context. We need one year of work experience. We request you for a motivation letter and the inscriptions, everything, the enrollment uh, can be handled online and it is quite an easy process. You shouldn't uh, worry too much about that. The timeline, the next intake will be for what we call winter semester. So by 15th of April until 31st of March, you can enroll for both of the programs, general management and operational excellence. And of course, some words to the programs itself. Uh, general management is an MBA which focuses on understanding, understanding what a company is, what a company consists of, the success factors for being also successful in the future. We talk a lot about strategy, strategy development, executing a strategy, also financing a strategy. We talk about change management. And yeah, uh, to understand the company maybe as a system, what needs to be adjusted in the system if you want to achieve new targets, new goals. And the target group, as mentioned on the slide, recent bachelor graduates with minimum of one year work experience. Of course, we want ambitious people uh, and we want people really uh, who, who want to get that practical understanding of management, of general management. The degree which will be awarded is an MBA. The course structure, as mentioned, to theoretical, to practical semesters. And the course consists of 12 modules. Each module will be worth five uh, credit points. And the modules are mentioned on the slides. We will share the slides with you later on so you can have a deeper look. And I think we don't need to read through each and every uh, single module. Maybe uh, the first mentioned module, Facts About Germany, is also a module which was designed for you to, to get some background on Germany on, as I said, the German philosophy of management, and it should help you to be successful in an Indo-German context. You have the choice of electives. We also provide German language training uh, under this uh, section, as long as you don't have a B1 level. But you can also, of course, and free of, uh, um, of charge, study electives as an add-on. Our operational excellence master, on the other hand side, is not a pure commercial master, but uh, I would say a techno-commercial master, uh, which focuses 
yeah, maybe somehow on the secrets of made in Germany, what needs to be ensured to produce a made in Germany quality uh, worldwide in different countries, in different contexts. And therefore, this course as a target group, uh, it would be required uh, that you have an engineering uh, degree as uh, the technical aspects will be uh, yeah, much uh, more important in this course as in the general management course, uh, of course. Uh, a minimum of one year work experience is required again and uh, we will focus on a lot of these core topics as supply chain management, lean production, industry 4.0 and the degree awarded will be an MBA and engineering. Core structure is just the same than in general management and the course is again also divided in basic modules, core modules and electives and we have tried to fill the curriculum with state-of-the-art topics as what we heavily discuss in Germany under the topic Industry 4.0, for instance. Yeah, I think we are also running out a bit of time and we are looking forward to your questions. If you should have questions also later on, you will find our contact details here mentioned on the last slide. And yeah, that's it from my side. Looking forward to your questions and maybe looking forward to welcome you, some of you at Hof University for the next semester. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Werner. Thank you very much, Ms. Schwarz, in case you can hear us. Wonderful yeah. presentations, a lot of information. And of course, yes, we have about seven minutes left and we have many questions to take care of in these seven minutes. And others who have questions but haven't managed to type them in as yet, do type them in. We'll try to take as many as we can in the seven minutes. And without much ado, I start right with the first question. Nimit asks, is the GMAT a score mandatory at the time of application or can I apply and then submit the score once I have it? It would be good if you have it by the time of the application. If it is about like uh, weeks when our deadline closes and your result uh, will be published, uh, I would recommend you to apply and uh, then to submit uh, your results as soon as you have them. Trust that helps you, Nimit. Then we have a question from Deepak regarding English language proficiency. He says, I have a six band IELTS. Can mm -hmm. I get into HOF or is the 6.5 absolute? necessary? Uh, normally we request the students for a 6.5 but we also have uh, that provision if a student has finished and conducted all the studies on the bachelor level in English language then this would be fine with us as um, to, to enter the course and to be admitted. In such a case you don't need to show up with an ILTS or a TOEFL. Right. Then we have a question from Hamid. He says he's a student from Afghanistan who has a bachelor's in mathematics. Is he eligible to apply for the MBA? Yeah, for the MBA, of course. Uh, therefore, or it is quite open and mathematics always helps dealing with figures. And at the end of the day, business administration has a lot to do uh, with figures and understanding how, um, yeah, what these figures are going to tell us. So most welcome. Right. And we have a question from Aniruddha. It looks to me that he uh, speaks from the background of the way in which Indian management institutions help their students land jobs. And so he asks, what will be the job prospects if I complete my internship, if I complete my degree? Do I have to attend a job fair? What does the universe, how does the university help me in securing a job? 
well one instrument which which really helps the students to get a foothold on the job market is the extensive period of internships we talk about one year uh, that can be uh, like one year with one company or one semester at one company and the following semester with a different company if the students do well and if they are successful uh, during their internship period uh, our experience um, really shows us that it is a good bridge into the job market. Plus, uh, we do have all the help. We have a career service. We have own career fairs. We participate in career fairs of different cities. So if the student requires help, wants help or needs help, all the help is here. But we want our students to be proactive and to get uh, to know our system of uh, getting a job, which is not getting placed via the university, but via applications and on own initiative. And uh, talking about our current batches, which have left uh, our university now after the winter semester uh, and heading for different cities all over Germany to conduct uh, their internships, it is uh, it was quite uh, a successful story and as i said you shouldn't worry too much there is a lot of help out there but we also need good students which show a good initiative right many questions and they're pouring in i hope all of you dear participants have noted down the email id because i don't see us having time for more than two questions so the two last questions uh, Prakant or Prakant, excuse in case, excuse me in case I mispronounce your name. India is a huge country with so many languages, it's difficult even for an Indian to pronounce names correctly. The question is, what are the chances of my being able to do a PhD after a master's from Hove? Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Bologna process in Germany. So you can switch like from a research university uh, to a university of applied sciences or other way around. And it is as always uh, talking about uh, PhD doctorates in Germany. Uh, it is about the student to find a supervisor. That supervisor has to come uh, from a classical research university, but if you're interested in the PhD opportunities at a University of Applied Science, therefore we have a system of collaborative um, PhDs uh, in collaboration with the research university and the degree, of course, would come from a classical research university. But I think the key to success is having a good idea for a good topic for a PhD thesis. Absolutely. And we take the last question for now. The question is also about career prospects. Uh, I think the student wants to know what kind of salary packages does one expect after a master's from Hope. That's quite a, a tricky question. Uh, I, I would say have a look, inquire via the internet. There are some statistics, but it's not only that India is a very heterogeneous country, but also in Germany it makes uh, somehow a different cost of living if you're in a more rural place like uh, our place, uh, Hof, or if you live in an expensive city like Munich. So the spread can be considerable, but I would say uh, after gradu graduation, if you're a good student, if you're a motivated student, uh, from the legal point of view, there are no major restrictions to stay back in Germany holding a German degree and you will receive a reasonable salary. Right, with that we come to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much, Ms. Schwarz. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Werner, for mm -hmm. your time and for the invaluable inputs. I'm pretty sure all the participants are taking home a lot more than just the information, Hopefully. ideas, ways of looking at their future. Please, sorry. Yes. <laughs>
Yeah. Right. So with that, I once again thank you. And we move on to the next presentation. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.